So hello everyone, um, welcome to the Horizon Weekly Insider. Happy Thursday, September 19th. Um, please remember that the recording of this call will be available on our uh, both um, Horizon podcast as well as in our uh, YouTube channel. So if you would like to check that out later, it will be available via those channels. So let's kick it off with our updates and the first one from the engineering department. Luca, if you would like to start. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Angie. Uh, today it will sound a little bit more like a radio, so we should call it Radio Horizon, at least for <laughs> today, because uh, uh, thanks uh, to the fact that uh, last week on Telegram I was chatting on, on our channel and I met uh, Stefano, um, I invited him uh, to visit our office and by coincidence he was from Milan, he, he actually works super close, super here, close, <laughs> yeah. 500 meters away, so he's here with me, with us today and uh, uh, it's a pleasure for us to have him. So, Stefano, why don't you tell us something about you? Hi, guys. My name is Stefano. Uh, I live in Milano. And uh, I'm a node operator since the beginning. Sorry for my English. I don't speak English every day, but... It's, it's good. It's good, uh, I hope. <laughs> and uh, I'm so... Um, <laughs> I see you excited. Yeah, yeah a little bit. <laughs> And oh, it's, it's a it's a very it's a pleasure to yeah, have you here. It's a pleasure for me. And uh, I also like the fact that uh, you are here today. We aim to be one of the uh, most transparent uh, and inclusive projects. So for us, it's uh, it's really great to have you here. And I encourage everybody from the community willing to meet us to um, to approach us because we we want to be open with our community members. Nice pictures. And that's a picture we just yeah. took. Thank you, Rosari. Okay, so we will be following the uh, call together. Now, um, uh, I wanted to kick it, uh, kick it off in this way today. Uh, I will now leave it to Alberto for uh, the traditional engineering update. Thank you and see you later. Thank you, Luca. Okay, regarding SciChain SDK, uh, Regarding the storage implementation, we identified uh, a bottleneck in terms of performance. And so we have conducted a test that showed uh, bad performances in uh, storage update. So we made a research on possible alternative libraries and identified uh, so far seven candidates. And three of them seems to be better in terms of performances and we're choosing one of these uh, in the next days and then we will proceed with the with the integration and uh, obviously performances of the storage are critical because they uh, are impacting node synchronization but because obviously when you receive blocks full of transactions you need to to, to index them to index the blocks to index all the formation and uh, this has impacts on wallets and all uh, the other components that uh, make usage of storage. Uh, so this is uh, one of our priorities right now. And um, regarding SDK, we are also proceeding with the integration of the sidechain test framework. And this framework will allow uh, creating automated test cases that are able to run multiple sidechain nodes and moreover running a mention node. So it's uh, with a Python script, you will be able to run multiple nodes and a, a mention node, and you will be able to perform some operation like, for example, forging blocks, verifying that all the nodes are uh, have received the new block, and also verifying that mining a mention uh, block will be uh, then received by the sidechain node then be forged in a, uh, the mention block reference in a, in a sidechain block. And uh, obviously this will be very, very, very uh, useful for verifying sidechain node synchronization, communication between mention and sidechain, and many other situations. And the design of this test framework is, a, uh, let me say, had a similar approach uh, of the mention one. Okay, regarding the main chain changes for sidechain support, 
uh, currently the code review is in project is in progress and after having finished the review we will schedule uh, possible uh, refinement okay uh, about the overall model uh, at the beginning of this week i had a meeting with uh, professor roman olinikov and dimitro kailov from ihk veritas team and in the meeting we discussed the detail of a new model extension the sidechain that we have been working uh, on in stealth mode for the last six, last six months. And more details on this uh, will come soon. And it's everything from my side. Thank you, Luca. Thank you, Luca and Alberto. So our next one will be Chronic on the infrastructure side. Hello, everybody. Um... So we've finished testing on testnet with the next uh, node tracker server side uh, code updates. And uh, yesterday we deployed a first server on mainnet as a uh, dry run pretty much um, before the planned deployment on next Saturday. So far the, the new code is working as expected, uh, except for one little bug, which we identified which will be uh, fixed later today. And a, um, so currently the new code is running on uh, SuperNode EU2. And uh, we will deploy a, a secure node server as well today um, as a more general load test because we see a lot more secure nodes on a single server than for super nodes at the moment. Uh, and uh, we don't expect any, any issues and um, the deployment will start Saturday evening European time with a little buffer into uh, Sunday if something does go wrong, but uh, no hiccups are expected. And um, generally, uh, we've communicated all of the, the updates, um, what's included already. Uh, we will post another blog post uh, later today about the maintenance windows so that everybody can prepare and um, we're, we're quite happy with the release so far uh, it, it will bring a lot of uh, improvements especially for node hosters as well so looking forward to to getting it deployed it, it was um, pretty much three to four months of work in the background um, which will be released uh, with this new tracker and that's it from infrastructure Thank you, Kranik. Uh, next one would be uh, Gustavo on the UX side. Actually, Angie, if I can uh, interject this, um, we also have uh, Andri Sobol in the call today. Uh, sure. So it would be a great occasion for, uh, for him to um, speak, uh, and in particular, since he has been the resource, uh, main resource dedicated to the sapling uh, denial of service issue uh, investigation, he will uh, be speaking about that. Andre, feel free to go on. Hello, hello, guys. Um, Hi. Yeah. So yeah, in um, in this week we uh, we analyze what 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 will happen if we will deploy uh, Zeppelin without any changes, uh, and we can have two possible problem. First, attacker can generate block with big set of snarks and try to DDoS our network in this way. And another, another problem, attack can, attacker can, can generate transaction and try to propagate it to the network uh, and uh, spam uh, neighborhood. So in the first scenario, our network will manage it because uh, block verification time is not a problem. Uh, we did calculation in the in worst case scenario, block verification will uh, be less than uh, 40 seconds. In uh, It was calculated in hardware, which we require for our super node. So our block frequency is two minutes and a half. So that means that uh, our network will manage this stuff. 
but uh, we still have the second uh, scenario. Uh, the second scenario, it can be a problem because attacker can send big set of shielded transaction to your node and your node will go offline. And how we can solve this problem, we should uh, specify specialized verification queue or transaction. And we need to modify logic of uh, uh, transaction verification. So if node receive transaction, node write this transaction uh, to verification queue without verification and the node will do it uh, in asynch uh, asynchronously. So, uh, and uh, I think it it will it it solves the problem. And uh, but uh, we can add some additional stuff. So we can have uh, we can port memory pool limitation from Bitcoin Core and uh, set reasonable defa default memory pool size. So it will manage the problem that if someone try to spam transaction to you and uh, you have no no memory to to keep it in memory so it will it will manage this uh, this stuff and we can port bap 152 uh it's a more efficient way to propagate block uh, in network so it will decrease uh, computational uh, computational overhead if we try to verify snarks so that's it from my side Thank you, Andre. Okay, so now we continue with Gustavo on the UX side. Hey, everyone. So we'll start with the help desk update and we'll have Mac to give the help desk update. Hey, Mac. Hi, guys. Um, so today's help desk metrics from around 20 minutes ago, we have 22 items which are in an open state. We have four items waiting for support, 12 items waiting for customer, um, and we have six items which we're terming as aged, which is essentially customer unresponsive. Um, and we have 11 items in the pending queue, which means either awaiting a software fix um, is possibly a bug bounty or is left there for informational purposes for the team. Um, another update that we have, some of you may have noticed that we've gradually started reorganizing the Discord channels. Um, we started that yesterday um, and we're going to continue that this afternoon. Um, so hopefully we're going to remove anything that is kind of unused now, um, tidy up the categories, make the whole thing a bit more organized um, and easier to find stuff for you guys. Um, that's it from me. Okay, thanks, Mac. So on the web development side, we finished the development of the new gamification features for the faucet. So we are currently testing that and uh, it's scheduled to be released on Tuesday. And we are also giving support to the HD project. And uh, on Sphere BioRizing desktop version, we had a minor release that included some upgrade dependencies and it was just that. And we are still running several tests and working on the performance and bug fixes. And it's everything for our side for now. Thank you, uh, Gustavo. Okay, so next one is uh, Vano on the VD side. Hello, everyone from Ukraine. So my main focus uh, is blockchain UA conference tomorrow in Kiev, Ukraine, and our upcoming meetup here uh, the day after tomorrow. And I'll be meeting uh, with a lot of our partners and um, community members, both at the conference and at the meetup. That's a conference I'm speaking about our side chains. And at the meetup, uh, I will be introducing uh, more generally our brand, our features uh, our technology to the meetup attendees and also talk uh, more briefly about our side chains and um, talk to very uh, interested people there so i have also brought some cool swag swag here for our community members so looking forward to it that's all from me back to you ng thank you Vano. Okay, so next one would be uh, Jonas on the Horizon Developer Environment Project. Sorry, took me a while to find the unmute here. Um, on the HDE, so um, let me start with the Zen IP process real quick. 
Um, there's still an open question regarding the licensing, but I think this is a non-issue for now. Um, we would like to require people that um, create Zen improvement proposals to um, license them under the MIT license. Um, but we're open to suggestions um, for other licenses. So if there are compelling reasons um, to use a different license or if it's un unacceptable for a contributor to use MIT, um, we're open to discussing this um, and they should just reach out, um, shoot us a mail. Um, the other um, still somewhat open question regarding the Zen IP process is um, regarding the discussion tool we're going to use. So obviously each improvement proposal will be accompanied by a discussion if this proposal makes sense, um, how it should be changed, if any changes should be done at all. Um, and we would like to facilitate an efficient and easy to navigate discussion. Um, forums can be pretty noisy, um, if not moderated well, um, and I really like the Kialo platform. Um, I haven't seen much adoption for it um, with other projects or basically anywhere, but I really like the structure. Um, if any of you guys have um, used it, so I've, I've played around with it, um, uh, took part in some public discussions and um, really like the process. If anybody, um, any one of you have some experience with that, please reach out and let me know what you think. Um, other than that, those are the, the two large open questions, I think, for now. And I'm still confident that um, yeah, by the end of the month, we'll have a public draft for the Zen IP process for the HDE. Um, Tuan is uh, continuously building the website and building out features. Tomorrow we're going to have a call about integrating the proposal system that Nathan has built a while ago and that has been sitting on the shelf um, unused. And we'll try to figure out how we can integrate that proposal system that is already, yeah, that is already sitting there, how we can integrate it with the HDE um platform um it, the proposal system allows people to um, create proposals in the first place um to comment and vote on them and um it includes a basic login and account system um so that is that and um we do have uh, we did add pdf versions of the academy content to um, the website, so I can throw the links in the chat in a second here. I um, just need to pull them up real quick. And if you prefer to read content locally, especially, um, yeah, I like to highlight stuff when I read, for example, um, that's why I prefer to read PDFs myself as well. Um, go ahead, find the PDFs, download them and read wherever you like. That is it from my side for now. Thank you, everyone. Hey, uh, Jonas. So <clears throat> the PDF shouldn't be available on the website. The PDF should be kind of like a reward for anybody who wants to give us their email address. So if we put them on the website, then they have no reason to give us the email. So I, I thought that that was, um, you know, the strategy here, but if anyone has any thoughts on that. But it kind of goes against the whole reward system if we have it freely available. Okay, thank you, Janos and Jonathan. So next one will be Lucy on the marketing side. Hello, everyone. Uh, so um, from the marketing side, we'll be publishing a blog post about blog um, side chain development later today. Uh, it is about node synchronization between main chain and side chain. Uh, so the blog post explains the importance and uh, the benefits of it. Uh, so it'd be an interesting read. Uh, and the Instagram giveaway ended yesterday. Uh, we received a total of 726 entries. Uh, and we will be drawing a winners tonight. So thank you everyone for joining for participating in this giveaway. Um, and then also uh, we uh, have the naming convention. Uh, now it's still accepting entries uh, for naming themes. And uh, we will have four winners. So the significance 
this convention it, for winners is more than receiving monetary prizes. Uh, the winning name themes naming mobile services, uh, SDK software release, um, sidechain software releases, wallets, and note clients. So uh, the winning themes will become a very big part of uh, uh, the Horizon brand. Uh, so we are really, uh, really looking forward to receiving more entries. Uh, and then also thank you, Mac, for working on uh, the organization of the data of the channel and, and um, Erica for planning all of it. Uh, and then also uh, Mac is uh, um, helping. Uh, Mac is helping uh, uh, us, you know, in the uh, the naming convention, uh, 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 receiving entries as well on the back uh, on the back end. Uh, so thank you for doing that. Uh, and then also thank you. Panel for representing uh, Horizon at UA Blockchain. We look forward to receive feedback, uh, pictures, and videos we can share with the community. Uh, and I'm also helping our community member from Uganda to set up a uh, uh, meetup group there in uh, Uganda. So uh, it's really good to see uh, the kind of involvement that we receive from our community. Uh, that's it for me. Jonathan, please, um, Chairman. Hey everybody, so since the last update, I've uh, worked on the blog for the quarterly update. Uh, really, I just helped edit it a little bit. Erica wrote it. Um, also wrote a blog for the faucet upgrades that Gustavo mentioned will be uh, being received on uh, Tuesday or scheduled for release on Tuesday. There's three main components, so we just want to make sure that people understand all of the different upgrades and how they could make some more Zen. Um, we had a call today to update some of the leadership team bios for pitching to the media. And um, Rolf, I reached out to you earlier for some, uh, some more information. And we have a couple of follow-on questions that um, I'll be reaching out to you for if you have time for that as well. Uh, we also received some raw videos from Carlos in Guatemala. So he's the guy leading the Fiscal Digital uh, project that Rolf has been talking about. So our goal with those videos, he sent about nine three-minute videos. So we have to kind of make it cool looking, have a good message, and also pretty polished, and turn it into maybe a three, two to three-minute video. So when, uh, Lucy, when you guys have time, um, you know, that'll be a really interesting story for us to tell. And I have... Uh, I had a meeting with uh, DAD about the faucet data. So they've completed that project and I have some interesting insights to share with the team, uh, which I'll be presenting uh, in the next week or so. So stay tuned for that. Thank you. I just wanted to um, add something that I forgot to mention. Um, uh, so Jonathan, the uh, the video I'll be working on, uh, I'll be working on the video as well. Uh, our design team, a design team is pretty, Occupied with uh, some of other uh, projects, including Marco. Uh, so, but I, I will be working on a video, uh, and and uh, Marco will step in also uh, in a later time. But we will try to get that uh, get that done as soon as possible. Uh, and then also we received some uh, feedback from our community uh, and also team about our uh, blog post. Uh, uh, and then also we are making improvement on that, and the Mac is also helping us working on that to make it uh, more mobile friendly. Uh, so, uh, and then uh, we added some uh, uh, kind of a custom based uh, features on our blog post as well uh, that improves, uh, uh, you know, reader experience and also um, provide an extra channel for people to ask questions. Uh, so Mac is also working on uh, implementing as well. That's it for me. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Lucy. And I wanted to remind everyone that we do have the mentee link up and running. So if you have any questions, please uh, log into menti.com and use code 963725. But it, it should be on the general channel as well. Thanks. Thank you, Jonathan and Lucy. So next one would be uh, Rosario on the product and engineering. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening here from um, the Milan office. I've been traveling for the last 24 hours, so I don't have uh, much updates. But I'm happy to be here in, in Milan and work with our team here. Uh, we're getting ready, or they're getting ready to wrap up uh, SDK alpha testing. So it's um, we're going to be 
uh, hopefully very soon, uh, thinking about and planning uh, sidechain uh, SDK beta, which I know Alberto is uh, not thinking about right now because we, uh, we're just wrapping up <laughs> the side uh, SDK alpha. Uh, also, super exciting, guys. I got to meet Stefano. Uh, thank you for coming into the office. And it's always fantastic to meet uh, community community members and especially just being down down the road. Uh, and Stefano has been a, a community member, a node operator since 2017. So that's uh, amazing for the team to get to uh, meet you in person. And I'd like to thank Mac for consolidating all the GitHub issues. Uh, and part of uh, something that we I've mentioned before uh, is that we are looking at cleaning up our GitHub and just setting up a, a process that will uh, hopefully enable the HDE uh, uh, program that we have. And uh, Mac, uh, that list that you provided will help us uh, hopefully burn down issues for the uh, prioritized repos. So I'll share it with Maurizio. Uh, you're welcome, Maurizio. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Oh, the Academy content is a great resource. And I, I do want to mention that I I actually send it to interested candidates, uh, interested individuals that are uh, wanting to join the Horizon team. So that that is a fantastic resource and, and something that uh, we have to, as as an organization, is to look at all the the content that we be, that is being created and methods to to grow our community, and making sure that we are able to uh, when people are. are uh, going into academy that we funnel them into our community, uh, but it, it's a fantastic resource and very lucky to to have that. Uh, and um, speaking of candidates, I've been talking to a few candidates, and as uh, everyone knows, uh, at least internally, we are still growing our team. Uh, right now, we're focusing on the technical side, so uh, I know there's. Uh, been a focus here in Milan and also in different parts of, of the world. So that is it for now. Thank you. Thank you, Rosario. And now Rob for the leadership closing thoughts. Thanks, Angie. Um, and likewise, I'm very happy to have met Stefano in particular because I believe he has a, a bottle of uh, something nice, some, some Prosecco for us here in the office yeah, to celebrate yeah. right afterwards. <laughs> Of course, of course, in the fridge. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Um, okay, so let's see the few items I wanted to recap here today. Uh, we are making progress on just uh, you know opening our um, you know developer environment for more community contribution. Things they've heard Jonas talk about and Rosario talk about are uh, really important for us go going in that direction. Um, so the Zen, the Zen. IP or Zen Improvement uh, Proposal System. We're looking to wrap up the draft for that and publish it, uh, hopefully by the end of the month. Um, I've also seen some amazing mockups, quite frankly, on the HDE web portal. Um, I, I think it looks uh, fantastic. And honestly, I'm, I'm a little bit shocked how quickly it's coming together. Uh, and especially being able to le leverage the backend proposal submission system that Nathan's already, already had uh, designed and built and basically on the shelf. Um, great opportunity there. Um, in the meantime, because we have actually had some some developers reach out from the community asking to contribute, um, you know, the, the kind of standard answer there is for sure, check out the, the repositories that we have open right now. Uh, we definitely have work that needs, um, you know, we need to do. Uh, we have a huge backlog. And, um, you know, one thing that I really like, I like that you guys renamed the, the developer channel called Development Central uh, here on... Um, on Discord. So guys, if you are technically oriented, even if you just want to participate in some of the conversation, please come to the, you know, the Discord channel, the Development Central, uh, join us on Telegram, you know, really join us everywhere. Check out the issues that are open on our repositories uh, and, and look for things that you can do to contribute. Uh, we definitely want um, more people to do so. And it, once we have the Horizon Developer Environment, the HDE set up, uh, we'll have much better, you know, curated opportunities for people to contribute. Okay, so another thing that uh, I did this week on Monday, uh, I met with along with Dean, an innovation minister in Panama. So we are actively looking to work on, um, you know, exploring some 
potential use cases of our technology to, in this case, improving bureaucracies. Um, and we have a bit of an opportunity to work with um, some, some different governments in Panama. So we're, we're exploring those actively. Still, still um, you know, in concept development, but um, I'm even mentioning this right now because we, we were actually very well received. And I think we have a, a unique opportunity to explore some use cases there. Um, the use case that seems to be uh, most of interest would be uh, like an asset registry, like a vehicle registry. Um, and this we would look to work in, in coordination with one of our uh, potential commercial partners in the area. So working with um, a large company and a potential government ministry on a pilot project, still all, all TBD, but just this is in response to some community sentiment that I've seen recently uh, saying, hey, the tech is nice, what you guys are working on, but we need to see use cases. Completely agree, and just want you to know that we're very actively exploring those. Um, and to address another concern that's uh, that has been mentioned recently, in particular with uh, a couple of privacy coin delistings from some prominent exchanges, uh, last month Coinbase uh, UK delisted Zcash, and it was just noticed last week about OKEX Korea uh, delisting privacy coins, including us. And I, I know this is. Um, you know, something we, we've always known that regulatory risk is probably one of our biggest risks as a, as a project. But I want to talk about some of the uh, you know, an opportunity that we've been discussing internally here. Um, you know, and there's been some mention in some of our community chats about something like this. But let me just throw out an idea. And you guys keep in mind that this is still concept development. Um, but one opportunity that we have with the sidechain system, um, and, and I would say that the the single largest benefit of our sidechain system is that it enables fully generalizable sidechains as long as they conform to the interface um, with the main chain. So one idea would be to potentially move our shielded pool uh, to its own sidechain. And, and the idea here would be to think about our main chain in simplest form, which would also be the most secure form, is purely a truth engine and anything else you know, and, and you could consider a private transaction um, to be like an application. And every other application should be migrated off of the main chain, and the main chain should only be a simple truth engine. And in this way, we we could achieve theoretically higher security, a more robust main chain, and then also much more opportunity to do a whole bunch of other applications. So the idea idea here would be rather than choose a single design for say a private transaction. And in our case right now, we have the, you know, the Sprout proving system from Zcash. In the future, we may have the Sapling system. Uh, we could en envision a world where we have each of these systems on their own side chains. We could potentially have a crypto note si you know, side chain, which is the privacy technology behind Monero and other projects. We could potentially have a Mimblewimble side chain, the technology behind Grin and Beam. Uh, and you could also look at uh, you know, other future developments for you know, making transactions uh, private as applications that can now be built on their own sidechain. So rather than us Horizon choosing a single design, uh, like the case that we have right now, we could actually open this up. And we hope, you know, this could be also a response to uh, regulatory pressure of having, you know, private privacy coins being cracked down on. I don't know, this is still TBD, even from the technology perspective, this is something we need to start exploring. From the regulatory perspective, I don't know if this would even be a sufficient response. Maybe this would make us even more, um, you know, scrutinized by regulators because our platform would be even more generalizable to the extent that developers can come in and build anything. Um, but still, it, it is something that I think we should consider. And you know, there are some other benefits to this, and this is something that I've chatted with Peace2 about. But auditability is is uh, potentially a huge benefit of this because if we knew that the main chain were simply a truth engine. All of the coins that exist on the main chain are now accountable for completely. And anything that requires additional privacy would happen on side chain. This in a way also provides a natural firewall between any of these shielded pools or shielded, you know, obfuscating technologies and our main chain. And if there were ever a bug in any of these types of technologies, they would be um, exclusively bugs in the side chains themselves and the implementations and not the entire money supply. So, you know, it is certainly an interesting uh, take on, you know, taking what is right now perceived as a, as a huge risk and turning this upside down into like a major opportunity for us as a project. So just an idea I wanted to close out with, guys. Any questions that we have um, so far, Lucy or Jonathan? Uh -huh. 
Yeah, so today will be short and sweet. And then you, I think you already answered one, uh, the top question, which is what Horizon team take on the recent events on privacy corners, unless you have something to add. No, exactly. So I, <laughs> it, it just goes to show that this is a, a huge concern on people's minds. Yeah. So uh, and then the other one is a comment that um, uh, someone said the Horizon Traders channel on Telegram needs a cleanup. Too many spam. Uh, spam. I think I can answer to that, and I do. Uh, I agree. We need to uh, um, stop the spam. Uh, and I'm a manager on uh, one of the other uh, Telegram channels that we have, and I understand that we receive so like a lot of spam uh, on a daily basis. Um, so I'll make sure that we uh, uh, stay on top of it. And then, uh, and then also any uh, co uh, community members that you know willing to uh, uh, kind of guard our channels and be kind of volunteer to manage uh, monitor. Uh, things like that, uh, you know, we we always welcome uh, that kind of uh, uh, that kind of help. Uh, but we'll make sure that we stay on top of it uh, to you know create a clean uh, communicate communicating platform for everyone. And that's it, really, from from us uh, uh, from questions that we have. Sure cool. Soon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining the call today. Uh, this was uh, another great set of updates for the week, and we'll see you again next week. Take care. Thank you, guys. Have a good Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye, guys.